ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to a special Valve Time Spotlight exclusive, in which we'll be taking a close look at one of the least discussed but most important components of Valve Corporation's upcoming Source 2 engine, Rubicon, the engine's physics system developed in-house at Valve. We've heard rumbles about this physics system for years, with details only becoming more and more concrete as time has passed. Now, with GDC 2015 taking place throughout this week and the possibility of Valve engineers bringing up the Source 2 engine in one of their four talks, we felt this would be a perfect opportunity to shed some light on Rubicon while trying to explain how we feel it may impact the engine as a whole. It's worth noting that we're not going to be foolish and lie to you by claiming this video is everything you need to know about Rubicon, because the vast majority of information regarding both Source 2 and its physics system is simply not available to the public, and for good reason. Regardless, hopefully you'll find this video to be interesting and informative, so let's get started. So what is Rubicon? Well, as we mentioned, Rubicon is a brand new physics system being designed and created by engineers at Valve specifically for use in the Source 2 engine. While we've sort of known about it for years, with some evidence dating back as far as 2012 and 2013, we first learned of Rubicon's odd name at GDC 2014, where Valve software engineers Dirk Gregorius and Sergei Migdaliski presented a pair of talks known as Physics for Game Programmers Quick Hull and Physics for Game Programmers Debugging Physics. While we're sure programmers may love both presentations, we're going to be focusing on the debugging physics talk for the purposes of this video, as that's where we find most of the substantial information on this topic. The presentation opens with Migdaliski creating a visual metaphor by comparing Rubicon and its physics systems to this large device covered in a tangle of complex interlocking cables before quickly moving on to discuss multiple topics well above our level of understanding, including collision detecting, serialization, compiling C++ code, and so on, which are explained over the course of about 99 pages. It's interesting to note that while Migdaliski delves into great detail regarding the debugging process and how his experiences have influenced the development of Rubicon, he is extremely careful not to give away any real details regarding its functionality or potential innovations. What we can gather from the description, however, is that Rubicon will effectively function as the replacement for Havoc, the physics system used as a base within the Source engine even to this day. This means that, as far as we know, Havoc will no longer be used in any of Valve's future titles potentially giving Valve a lot more freedom over precisely what they want from the physics systems in their games. Now, if we move further into the presentation, we can see a series of PowerPoint slides Migdaliski used to support his points, which, once upon a time, would have featured videos and full-resolution images, neither of which can be accessed on the PDF version we downloaded from the GDC Vault a year ago. Regardless, these slides still provide an interesting look at Rubicon and some of the games we could expect to see it incorporated in. The first and most well displayed is Left 4 Dead 2, which Migdaliski's slides show as being the main game he used during the debugging process. This fits right in line with known evidence regarding Source 2, as we've known an in-house port of Left 4 Dead 2, or at least parts of it, onto the new engine has existed for a few years now, although exclusively as a testing tool, not necessarily as a product or update set to be released to the public. This is confirmed to us later in the presentation as a pair of slides show a single frame from each of the two preview videos, both of which feature a windowed version of Left 4 Dead 2 running alongside the debug program with the title Left 4 Dead 2 64-bit. This may not seem important, but the original Source engine we still use today does not support 64-bit processing as even 64-bit operating systems will continue to run the older 32-bit variants. It's just a product of how old the engine is at this point. With the release of the Dota 2 Workshop tools last year and the primitive version of Source 2 contained within them, the community was able to identify that the engine and its games will feature both 64-bit and 32-bit versions for the first time in Valve's history, proving this in-house version of Left 4 Dead 2 is most definitely running on Source 2. We want to reiterate that while this updated Source 2 version of Left 4 Dead 2 does exist, it doesn't actually mean it will ever see the light of day outside of Valve, as it was likely created just to help test the engine at a basic level of development, while also learning how ported games function or how they can go wrong. We may see it release at some point, but there is currently no evidence to support such a claim. Moving on, the debugging program we mentioned continues to show up throughout the rest of the presentation, with some slides showing more than others. The design of the program and its various windows feature a largely gray interface and bear a striking resemblance to many of Valve's recent software, including Source Filmmaker and the aforementioned Dota 2 Workshop tools, once again highlighting it as one of Valve's own in-house programs. We've deliberately avoided using the testing program's name before now as it's pretty significant given recent findings shown off in one of our recent Roundup episodes. Some of the slides show the program's window title, revealing the name Physics Testbed. 
Light bulbs may be sparking in the minds of some viewers now as code pertaining to this program was recently found within the model underscore editor DLL files used by the Dota 2 workshop tools, with the code being updated as recently as January 2015. As some of you may remember, the code was referenced alongside the acronym HL3, which we all know likely refers to the long-awaited Half-Life 3. This of course means the same program shown throughout the slides was recently used alongside a test build of Half-Life 3 within Valve. Aside from this one line of code, there's no indication regarding what stage of development Half-Life 3 is in. It merely proves to us that the game is in fact still being worked on. As usual, we want to stress that there's no reason yet to get hyped about Half-Life 3, just be patient. We're sure the game will be ready to go whenever Valve is happy with it, and that's the only way we want it. Back to Rubicon itself, there unfortunately isn't really a whole lot more to say regarding the specifics of the physics system, primarily because the coding and practices discussed in the presentation are all pretty general. Regardless, we hope this video has helped shine some light on the rather obscure topic, and hopefully we'll get to learn more very, very soon. Even both Gregorius and Migdaliski have once again hosted physics-based talks at GDC 2015 this week, it's possible references to Source 2 and Rubicon have been contained within their newer talks, but we have no idea since this script was written late last week. At the time of writing, we don't think it entirely likely we'll see anything too significant given how general the topics are, just like last year. Both of their talks also use the same primary title as last year, Physics for Games Programmers, with only the subtitle featuring any kind of variation, including physics optimization strategies and robust contact creation for physics simulation. It's also quite possible most of this information will be outdated in a few weeks as we gradually learn more and more about Source 2 and the future of Valve's software and hardware technology, but we thought it was worth sharing for the time being. That'll just about do it for this video covering Rubicon and Source 2, so hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little more about the future of Valve. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch TV, and to sign up over on the ValveTime.net community forums to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest Valve-themed content. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.